It's important to understand for the FRCS exam that the proximal femur exhibits a typical um, trabecular pattern in order to resist specific tensile and compressive forces placed upon it. And these uh, trabecular pattern normally form in lines of stress and they form uh, as a result of remodeling uh, according to Wolf's law and uh, it, it remodels in lines of forces um, to allow the bone to resist those specific tensile and compressive stress stresses and, uh, and loads across the proximal femur. So first of all, I would draw the proximal femur uh, with the trochanter here, and then your neck like so, then you have your head there like so, and you'd have your cortex here and here, and then I draw the acetabulum like so, and then so to remember the uh, the tensile and compressive groups, there are broadly speaking five uh, groups to remember. There's one trochanteric group, and I normally get this out of the way first because that's easy to remember, and the lines go in this direction. So that's the trochanteric group. Then you have two tensile groups and two compressive groups, and there's a primary and secondary. So first of all, let's go towards the primary compressive group. So that starts here and goes up towards the head in this fashion, like this. So this is your, I'll label that here, that's your primary compressive. Now your primary tensile group starts from here and arcs across like this. And you can see how they tend to resist tensile and compressive uh, uh, loads placed upon it. So this is your primary tensile group. Now your secondary compressive group comes from here and arcs this way, uh, like this. So that's your primary, uh, sorry, secondary compressive group. And your secondary tensile group is more of a kind of continuation down here from your primary tensile group. So that's secondary tensile. That's your secondary tensile group. And you can see that there's a, a triangle which is formed here between the primary compressive group, the primary tensile group, and the secondary compressive group. And this triangle is called Ward's triangle. And Ward's triangle is purely a, a radiolucency seen on an X-ray between these three groups. And it's also uh, the area when you do a DEXA scan which shows the lowest bone mineral density purely because um, it's an area which is rather absent of these trabecular patterning uh, and therefore the bone mineral density is usually lowest in this triangular area. Now, the way I would try to apply uh, this diagram clinically is that you may get a scenario where your examiner gives you in your trauma viva of a young patient who's uh, sustained an intracapsular neck of femur fracture, uh, and the scenario will uh, eventually lead down to going to theater to try to get it reduced, uh, closed using the lead better maneuver, and get it fixed. And you'd normally try to reduce this um, closed in theatre uh, with, with a traction table. And the examiner may ask you, how would you know, or what radiographic parameters do you look for to ensure that you've got an adequate reduction before your fixation? And this is where we come to this diagram. And uh, there are three radiographic parameters that I would, I would, uh, I would, I would tell the examiner. So firstly, I would use Shenton's line. Secondly, I would use the Garden's alignment index. And thirdly, I would use Lowell's alignment theory. 
So this is where you draw this diagram and show each of these three and how you'd use it uh, to ensure an adequate reduction. So Shenton's line, everyone knows, it's the, uh, the medial uh, calcar line here, which would form a continuous line with, this, with the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus. Uh, so that's Shenton's line here. So that's number one. Garden's alignment index is um, the angle formed on the AP view from the, uh, the vertical shaft of the femur and the, the, the trabecular patterning of the primary compressive group. So if I draw this line down here, like so, this angle here, according to Garden's alignment index, should be between 160 to 180 degrees. It's usually around 165 degrees. So you'd know that if, if this angle was um, less than 160, you'd have uh, a varus uh, malreduction, and if it's greater than 180, you'd have a valgus malreduction. This is on the AP view. You can also use Garden's alignment index on the lateral view where the trabecular patterning should um, line up exactly, so at 180 degrees, so it should all, it should form a straight line. Lowell's alignment theory um, is uh, slightly more complicated in that his theory states that if you've got a perfect reduction, you should have uh, an S-shaped curve on both sides of your femoral neck, okay, so here and here, on both views. So now obviously this diagram only represents an AP view, but you get the idea that both sides in a reduced uh, femur should form a gentle S or a reverse S curve as the neck produce, uh, continues with the head here and here. If this was malreduced, so if I draw a smaller picture down here, if you had, um, for example, a fracture here and uh, your, your head uh, kind of comes there and your fracture is across there and there, you could, you could, you could almost imagine that, so, so this is valgus malreduced, for example, uh, your, your line would give an, a very acute angle here and this line here would almost just follow a C shape there. So this is where you would have a malreduction. So Lower's alignment theory states that you should have a smooth or reverse S shape on both sides of the femoral neck in all views. Whereas if it's malreduced, you'd either get a C shape such as this, and on the, on the other side, you'd have an acute uh, an acute bend in your S. Uh, this is only in the AP view, but it's similar in the lateral view as well.